I thank you for this time that we can come in your presence, just based in your presence, Lord God. Be filled with your power. Be filled with your glory. Lord God, meet each and every need, spirit, soul, and body this morning, Lord God. Father God, you know our hearts, you know our needs, and Lord God, we know that you desire to take care of each and every one of them. Father God, we love you, praise you, and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Good morning. All right. Do we have any first-time guests? First time you've ever been inside? Oh, okay. Welcome. We're so glad you're here today. All right. All right. Yes. Okay. I hope you all got a bulletin because there's a ton of stuff to talk about. All right. And I can't remember it all. All right. On Common Ground, it's this Saturday night from 7 to 10 down at the Youth Center. Invite a friend. Um, the entertainment is U3 Plus. I guess, is that what they say? Okay. You want to say? He wants you to say something. Never shy. You never shy away from the microphone. Make sure you stay close. All right. On Common Ground, don't forget. That's one of our evangelistic outreaches. It gives you an opportunity to invite people to come, not into a church setting, but into a coffee house setting where you can fellowship. You know, there's wonderful praise music that's going to be happening, but it's a time for you to connect with other people, to bring them in, you know, so that we can touch them with the love of God. So I just want to encourage you. This is our kickoff for the next season. You know, let's not just be satisfied with what's happened in the past. Let's make it a fantastic new season. You know, with new faces and new lives that are going to be touched. So just encourage everyone, come down and let's start off a good year. And there's food. And there's food. This is the beginning of the sixth year, right? Sixth year? I think it's seven. 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 Oh, seven year. Seven year. Seven year. Woo! Time flies when you're having fun. And there's food. Okay. Yeah, there's food. At a minimal cost. All right. Um, okay. In here, March 29th, we are going to be having a Palm Sunday pasta dinner. So don't. Put anything in your slow cooker. Don't plan any lunch that day. Plan to be here, okay? Um, the cost is $6 for adults and $3 for 10 and under. And it's, all the proceeds go to help pay for the youth convention. And the youth convention, you know, it's a costly thing for our young people to go, but it's a life-changing thing. You know, it's amazing to go into the, the giant center in Hershey and to see, what, seven, 8,000 people worshiping God. I mean, you know, the, the, well, I guess it's a candlelight, but I don't know if it's candles anymore that they use. But anyway, um, on Friday morning, it's amazing. I mean, just to see people worshiping, to see the young people worshiping. It's, it's, you know, we want our kids to have that opportunity. I praise God my kids had that opportunity. And I want, you know, I want them to be able to have that. So plan to come, plan to, I mean, you can even pay more than $6 for your meal. That will be fine. If you go to Olive Garden, you pay more than six bucks. So you can pay more. It's going to be better than Olive Garden. It's going to be better than Olive Garden. Takeout orders will be available. Also, we have after service. Sean, would you just stand and tell us what we're going to be doing? Uh, there's going to be a table set out down there. Um, I announced last week that we had some hoagies. I know some people didn't have money. Um, the youth um, will be finalizing their hoagie sale today, so we'll have a table down there for anybody who didn't buy last week. It's $7. There's five or six different types of hoagies, turkey, Italian, BLT, pepperoni, whatever. We need your dad. No, we order, order them and they'll be delivered on the 26th. Yeah, order, pay for them today, pick them up the <coughs> week after that. But we need, please, so, come on. Good, good carbs, okay? Amen? Hoagies, good carbs. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Sanctified hoagies. <laughs> okay. All right. Whatever, whatever, whatever. All right. And then still along that same line, next Sunday, we are going to take a special offering for, um, you know, youth convention for the kids. Like I said, it's, a, it's an extremely expensive venture. You know, I mean, if you have more than one kid going, it's tough. If you, you know, even one kid is tough. But it's an amazing time. So please, you know, prepare to give. Give generously so that they can go and be blessed and come back and bless us. Okay? You know, it's like igniting the fire. So, all right, Easter egg hunt. April 1st, um, at, from 7 to 8.15. We need 
need everybody's help. So we need everybody to bring candy and eggs. And Stephen, how many eggs are you going to bring? 800. 800. Stephen's buying 800 eggs for us. Now all you need to bring is candy. Okay? So, but we need more eggs. Hey, the more eggs we have, the more eggs the kids get. And so that's what's amazing about it. So please, we can see we're going to be filling the eggs on March 31st, the day before, at 11 o'clock. So if you have the opportunity to come and help, that would be wonderful. All right. Um, Women of Purpose Spring Event, April 11th. Um, it will be at Monroeville Assembly of God. Babby Mason is the speaker that day. Um, we're having two sections together. So the suburban section and the metro. So all the people in the Pittsburgh area, all the ladies, are coming together for that event. So it's going to be an awesome time. So ladies, take a minute of away. I know again it's money. I mean, you know, we live in this world. It's $25, but it includes lunch, and it includes the time to fellowship with your sisters in the Lord. So please, you know, you can sign up. The sign-up sheet's out there. Money is due by March 25th because they want everything by the end of the month. And Easter morning is coming. Woo! All right. Well, yeah, okay. Um, and so we're going to be having our special Easter service. But before that, we're having a pancake breakfast. Now, that's good part. Pancakes are good parts, all right? So again, it's a free breakfast. What an amazing time to invite somebody again to come. The coffee house, pancake breakfast. Most people want to come to church on Easter. Christmas and Easter, most people will try to come to do their, you know, to do their duty. And so it's an amazing time to come. They can have breakfast, be here for our service. Again, a very non-threatening way to invite your friends. So we're going to have handouts, I believe, in the future to be handed out so you can invite them. So again, prepare for that. All right, and today's the last day to sign up for one of the two uh, life groups for women, and the sign-up sheets are in the foyer. All right, Usher, or no, oh, Buddy Barrel, sorry, I forgot. All weekend, I kept thinking about my Buddy Barrel, so guess what I did? I forgot my Buddy Barrel. All right, so next month, next month, I think it's going to be overflowing because I think I've forgotten for several months. So. Who brought their buddy barrel? Who brought their buddy barrel? Let's hear them shaking. Oh, a couple. All right. All right. Well, bring them up. I don't know that. I think it's sad to put it all in there, but that's okay. Where's buddy? Oh, there. Adults, you can also. Yes, you can bring your millions, your thousands, you know. That would be wonderful. We'll accept it. Get yourself a nice little M&M. Yes, M&M. Remember, M&M is to be mission-minded. That's what M&Ms are. Mission-minded. All right, thank you. Tommy, did you get an M&M? Okay. All right, mission-minded. And, oh, there are candy canes in there, too, if you're not an M&M person. Oh. He put it in already.
You know, we're not asking you to knock on doors and, you know, witness to people or anything like that. We just walk the streets of Glassport and we pray. We pray for people. You know, and I read And, you know, if you walk by businesses, we pray for those businesses that God would bless. And how do you know that our town needs to be revitalized? And, and, and yet, I believe that through prayer that God can transform our community. Yeah. Transform our churches first and then transform our communities. That's how it works. Communities do not transform churches. Churches transform communities. Amen. And so we're committed to that. We're going to be transforming our city. Amen. 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 Claiming it for Jesus Christ again. Okay. And so, amen. Amen. Well, are you ready to give again? Yes. Today is uh, our mission Sunday as well. So I know we kind of get, you know, one, one offer can be tough at times, but we're asking you just to. Uh, have a heart for missions, heart for the world. We uh, support missionaries monthly, and it's not a lot, but we're able to send money and to help them in their ministry, okay? And your tithes and your offerings support the missionary work right here in the last point. Amen? Amen? And so, Father God, we just thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your people. Lord, these tithes and these offerings, Lord, we lift them up to you. We ask that you bless them. Bless the gift and the giver. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 We're going to say that. I think just a rather appropriate song as we get ready to hear the word this morning. And as also as we receive our offerings. You're the God of the city. You're the king of his people. You're the Lord of this nation. You're the light in his darkness. You're the hope to the homeless. You're the peace to the blessed.
and greet at least four people, and then you are.
In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, and we need to take this warning because I believe it's not only a warning to the, you know, to the unbeliever or to the one who's not a Christian, but I believe there's a warning here for Christians. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by our Lord and was confirmed to him by those who heard him. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the verse is only 11, 11 words long, and it's one of the most powerful verses in all the Bible. <laughs> And it says this here, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There might be 12, 12 words in that, in, that, in that verse. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know, the Bible says this here. The Bible says that we are all sinners. Okay? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that we are all sinners. The difference in sinners going to heaven and sinners going to hell really teeters on one thing. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now maybe some of you were kind of taken back by that by that phrase, sinners going to heaven. Yes, I am a sinner going to heaven. Okay? See, we're, we're all sinners. Today, there is, a, there, there is such confusion in, about what, 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 that, what be, being a sinner is, what really sin is. Let me tell you what it requires. Two things requires to be saved. Number one, and this is, the first one is the hard one. Because this is where many of us really struggle coming to this point where we admit, where, where you admit, you must admit, I am a sinner. Because, see, we like to justify ourselves. We like to compare ourselves. Well, I'm not as bad as they are. So, you know, well, yeah. But, you know, in order to be saved, in order to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and to go to heaven, if you, if, if you have a struggle here this morning admitting that you're a sinner, most likely you will, you will never find Christ. You will find a way to justify and to find some reason why I'm not as bad as others. To deny that you are a sinner this morning. And I've talked to, to, to some Christians who really... You know, I, I don't know if they don't really don't think they're sinners. But anyway, but to, to deny your sin, to deny that you're a sinner, is to call God a liar. You know that. It is to call God a liar because God says you are a sinner. And the devil does all that he can, all that he can try to do to convince you to the contrary. That well, I'm not well, you know, yeah, 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 but you know, but but you know, there are people who sin a whole lot worse than I do. Have you ever heard that one? I've heard that all the time. Regarding it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You're a sinner, and in the eyes of God, let me tell you what separates you. What separates me? Let me just make a personal. What separates me from God is sin. That's it. It's not. It's not anything else. There's only one thing that separates man from God, and that is sin. And in order to cross the bridge, you have to admit, I'm a sinner. Because until you come to that place where you know that you're a sinner, you will not know the need of being forgiven of your sins. You won't understand well, what's so important about being forgiven. Unless you understand that I'm a sinner and therefore I need to be forgiven because it's my sin that keeps me from God. Yes, yes, amen. Okay, and so first of all, we 
You have to admit, and that, for my life, many years ago, that wasn't very difficult. I, I don't know. Maybe things were simpler years ago. I, I don't know. But for me, it was pretty clear what I was. I was a sinner. <laughs> Greg, how about you? You, 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 know, you didn't have any problems coming to that conclusion. Do, do you have a problem coming to that conclusion? Then I'm telling you that the devil has blinded you about your sin. Your heart is calloused about your sin. To admit that I'm a sinner is tough. The second thing, the second thing, there's only two things that must happen in order for someone, a sinner, to go to heaven. Because we're all sinners. And some go to heaven and some don't. But the second thing, the first thing is you've got to admit that you're a sinner. you got to admit it. And for me, it wasn't hard. I, I, God, I'm a sinner! God didn't have to say, yes, I know. Okay? God didn't have to say that. Okay? It was important for me to know. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit that brings you to that point where you come face to face with that reality. I am a sinner lost. I'm a lost sinner. What, what can I do? Well, that comes in the second thing. The second thing is that we need the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. We must believe that it is the blood of Jesus that saves us. You recall in the Old Testament, children of Israel, they were in captivity in Egypt to Pharaoh. Remember that? 400 years. And that's a whole typology of sin and the devil and all that kind of stuff. Moses, God rose up a deliverer. Moses, God rose up Jesus, amen, a deliverer. God rose up Moses, sent him to Pharaoh, and remember the, the ten plagues, but the last plague, let's focus on the last plague. The last plague was death. That the, the firstborn of every home would, would, would die unless, unless they did one thing. <coughs> Recall what that was? Is that they took the blood of the lamb. They took the lamb. And it sounds pretty gross. They slipped the throat of the lamb. And they poured the blood out and put it in the bowl. And then they took a brush or whatever they had and they would mark the doorpost of their house. Mark the doorpost of their house. And so that when the death angel would come later on that night, every, every doorpost that was marked in blood, the death angel would pass by. They were safe. Many years later, on a cross in Jerusalem, God's Lamb. Anybody know who God's Lamb is? God's Lamb. So amazing. Just listen to this. The Lamb of God sent by God. He spilled His blood so that each and every one of us could be washed in that blood. So that when death comes, guess what? Death passes over us. Because, see, the Bible says that he's the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in him will never, what? Never die. Yet this body will, this body will fade away and die and it will, you know, but what? The person who I am, the created person that God, my soul and my spirit continues on forever. And when we admit and when, if you can come to the place in your life, and if you have never done that, you're going to have an opportunity in a few moments. You see, you just can't be grabbed. You just can't get caught up in the church and come to church and all of a sudden assume that you're a Christian. There are so many people today, let me just tell you, that are coming to church every single Sunday, but they never have ever admitted that they're a sinner, nor have they ever asked Jesus Christ to wash them in, the precious, in his precious blood. And yet, they come to church every Sunday and they believe they're going to heaven. And my friends, I'm sorry to say they're not. Because God is a holy God. 
And it is our sin that separates us. And, but God, God in His mercy, in His great mercy and love, He provided the Lamb. He provided a way for you and I. Even though we still sin. Does anybody here still sin? Yes. Yes, we sin. And my heart hurts when I sin. And I ask God to forgive me because I really don't want to sin. But I know that I'm, in the core of my being that I am a sinner still. And saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. There's so many people who think today, well, but you know, if I'm just good, if I can just weigh the scales of good and evil, if I just do less less evil than than good, then I I will certainly earn a way to heaven. I will certainly be good enough to go to heaven. No, my friend. If I attend a certain name of a church, well, that must guarantee me that I'm going to go to heaven if I go to a sin as a not church. No. Jesus not only bore my sin upon the cross, but he took my punishment. You know that? He took your punishment. Jesus completely satisfied all the, all the demands of a holy God. You know, so that's something that we're, we're kind of lax today in about this holy God. I, I believe in many ways. Now, I'm not saying that we need to be legalistic. But I believe in many, many, many ways we've become too casual. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? We become too casual with God as if God is our bud. And you know, you know, many refer to uh, you know the man upstairs. Now he's not the man upstairs. He is the holy God upstairs. And unless you've been washed in the blood, he'll have nothing to do with you. Now he loves you. But don't misunderstand that. He loves you. And he wants you to know him more than anything else in the world. But I remind you of who he is. We don't bring God down here. God brings us up to him. And we live in a world today where religion, that's what, what we, religion is trying to bring God down so that to our level. No. God is a holy God. To reject God's plan and His love is, is tragic. I want you to think about this here just for a second. Just think about it. Let this thought just resonate in your heart for a second. Please. Just let this thought just... Because it will just mess you up. Because it messes me up every time when I think about it. That the God of the universe, the God who, that he loves, he loves me incredibly, a sinner. <laughs> Why do you love sinners? I don't know. That for a season, he would come to this earth. So we're talking about God. We're talking about the God who is holy and Almighty. We sang about him just a moment ago. I, whenever I sing that song, well, I tell you what, it's this, it's this earthly body that keeps me down. I want you to know that every time we sing that, man, I, my, my spirits want to jump out of me and just go with you. Now, you know? The God that he, that he loves me and that not only did he love me, how did he prove his love to me. He came to this earth. Think about that. Would you? You know, I mean, just think about that. The God who, who you know, who, who is holy and perfect and just and, and, and just every, you know, everything that we can imagine that he is and then to come to this earth and then to live on this earth and to be treated the way that he was treated. To be rejected by his own people, to be to be tried as a as a criminal, to be to be placed upon a cross and like a thief. Think about that. That's the God who loves you. And why did He do that? Why did He do that? Because the, that's the only way that sin could be destroyed. Is through the shedding 
thing of blood. Blood must have been shed for sins. In the Old Testament, which is oftentimes difficult to read because it's kind of hard to understand and whatever, but that's what the Old Testament is really all about, is that all those, all those sacrifices and all those things, they were just for a temporary time. They were needed because even through them, God's people were forgiven. Sinners were forgiven. But one day, God would send his son. God. God would send God. And he would become a man. And he would die. And his blood would be shed. So that, so that when any one of us, any one of us, through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, can come to the place in your life where he can be a sinner. I'm no longer trying to justify my sins. I'm no longer trying to dress them up anymore. I'm not dressing them up anymore. I'm a sinner. And I'm lost. And the only way that my sin can be forgiven so I can be in right relationship to God is for God to take the blood and to apply it to my life and to wash it away. The old hymn, what can wash away my sin. What? You know, sing. Some of you don't sing too well. That's why you're down there. I've been out there. Praise God. Well, whether or not you're either tuned or not, it's true, right? Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Guys, there's no other way. Do you understand that this morning? And see, as we go out and win the loss, you know, let's not go out and say, well, come on, you know, come, come to church and we'll help you be a better person. No, we want them to admit that they're sinners and they're lost and they need a Christ. They need the Lamb of God to wash them. And then guess what? They, becomes, they, they become what? Say, sinners just like us. Amen. Going out and to share the good news that it's not by works of righteousness. It's not by attending the right church, being born in the right family, doing the right things, but it's being born from above by the Spirit of God as He applies the blood into my life. Let me tell you, the enemy is trying to keep this secret. How many times do we even hear about this anymore? That it is the blood. You know, last Sunday I told you, I kind of made a statement that might have freaked some of you out, that Jesus is the great theologian of hell. <laughs> Remember that? Some of you, whoa, what did you want? The great theologian of hell. Well, the reason why I can say that is because Jesus tells us more about hell than anyone else in the Bible. <clears throat> and why does he tell us about hell? Because it's a real place. And he is the answer. He is the answer. I want to leave you with three things today. I want you to write down three things, okay? Just, I want to leave you with these three things this morning. And, and it, I, I believe that these are kind of like action points, things that maybe you can begin to, maybe you can, uh, that I, believe, I want you to know this. I want you to know that, uh, that God, with everything that is in God, everything that He, you know, that the Bible tells us that he is. And sometimes when we hear messages about hell and people going to hell because they don't know Jesus or they don't know God, we can get an image of sometimes that, you know, wow, you know, wow, maybe God likes sending people to hell. <laughs> you know, I don't think so. I believe with all my heart that every time someone dies and goes to hell, all of heaven weeps. And I believe that the same thing that that when a saved sinner dies and goes to heaven, all of heaven rejoices. Three things. I want you to know that God wants everyone saved. I want you to hear that this morning because there's a there's there's teaching that goes around well God's already predetermined who it is and what it knows. I believe that God because yes, He's infinitely all all knowing. We're not going to get into that this morning, but the heart of hearts, at the very core of what I'm going to say is God wants everyone. Yes. 
to be saved. God wants you to be saved. God wants you, a sinner, to come to heaven. Because God did not, God did not create you so that you would spend an eternity in hell. God created you to, to what, so that you could be with Him forever. Sin messed that all up, but God provided the antidote. Amen. Thank God for the antidote. And you know what the antidote is? The blood of Jesus. Amen. And it's pretty easy. Just admit I'm a sinner and wash me clean, Lord, and He will. And so I want you to know this morning, without any shadow of doubt, that your friends, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers, people that you cross in the street, people that you see in the marketplace, people that you might see in an arena, God wants every one of them saved. He wants every one of them to, to be saved and come to the knowledge of Him. That's what 1 Timothy 2.4, you can know, write that verse down. You can look at it and look at that verse. And as you're praying for your, your friends, as you're praying for people in your family, as you're praying for your, your contacts and, and those that you mingle with throughout the week, know this, that God wants them saved. God wants you, He wants you to know that this morning, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Number two, I want you to write this down, this next, this next phrase here. Number one, what? God desires all to be saved. Number two, it is the devil that, bland, that blinds the eyes of men that they cannot see. What brought them to that place of blindness where they just simply reject Jesus Christ? There's all kinds of roads. Amen. Many have traveled the road of hurt, and because they've been hurt, I reject God and everything that He stands for because He allowed me to be hurt or something like that. And then there's others that have gone through the road of of loss who have lost someone, and you know, well, I just, you know, and you know what I'm trying to say, but in the end, in the end, whatever whatever roads that people take where they just can't see, they can't see God that loves them. And I've talked to so many people, and maybe you have too, that just can't see that. You know why they can't see that? It's because they've been blinded. The Bible tells us that in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it talks about this gospel that we preach. And we preach this gospel, and, and, and the Bible says that, that some just can't see. You know, it's like, you know, have you ever seen something, but yet you can't see it? You're showing somebody something, and it's like, and they're looking at you, and they're like, you know, they're looking at you, well, what are you talking about? I don't see it. And yet you see it right there. Has that ever happened to someone? You know, maybe it's a painting, maybe it's a picture. You know, can't you see it? Well, no, I can't see it. It's like it's and and there's 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 so many people today. So many people today that that just can't see. They're blind. Listen to what the Bible says. Whose minds? The God of this world has blinded them who do not believe. So let's start, let's start knowing what the problem is. And part of, and much of the problem today is that people, there are so many who are just simply blinded to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They can't see it. But, but what can we do? Well, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. That's kind of where the title comes into our message, which we're going to get to the end and talk more about next week. See, you know, I talk to people about, about God and grace and His blood and salvation and, and you know, the truths of, 
the truth about sin and, and hell and what's going to happen. And it's like, you know, they just sit there and they kind of scoff at, oh, yeah, I'm going to be partying with my buddies out there. You know, we're going to be drinking some suds and, you know, you know, hitting the, you know, taking this, you know, we're just going to have a blast in hell. You know, it's like, oh, my gosh, Lord, what, what are they thinking? Yeah, I know that it sounds cool and whatever, but... Oh man, this is terrible to think, you know? You know? See, the, the God, the, see, you know, it, it's not the one who is saying that. It is, see, in the world that we live in, we live in a spiritual world, you know that. And, and there, is, there is the God, of the, the little God of the world, of this world. Satan, the devil, the demons, whatever you want, all that stuff. And their number one purpose is to keep you from seeing the light, is to blind you. And they will blind you any way that they can and use any means that they can. And they will take anything that they can from you to blind you so that you will not see the truth. They will blind you about sin. They will blind you about hell. They will blind you on and on and on and on. Write down these three verses. You can look at them later. In John 8, 4, 4. John 8, 4, 4. I want you to know just a little bit about the devil. It says this here about the devil. John 8, 44. He was a murderer from the beginning. You see, he murders. He is still today murdering lives. All over the world, he is murdering lives. People are ending their lives and they're going into a lost eternity forever. He's a murderer. He does not stand in the truth. There is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own heart, for he is a liar and the father of it. John 10.10, 10, you know this verse, the thief comes, referring to the devil. The thief does not come except to do three things, he says. To steal, now this is the words of Jesus. To steal, he'll steal your life. He'll steal your health. He'll steal everything that he possibly can. Steal your family. He will, he, he'll find nothing more joyous to do than to steal everything in your life and leave you empty. Leave you to the point where you're convinced that life isn't worth living and you kill yourself. That's the devil. Is that, is that God? No. God. Yeah. To kill. Remember he just said he's a murderer. And destroy. And then the verse that we just talked about, 2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 and 4. And then number, the last thing I want to say about this is number one, God wants them all to be saved. Number two, this is kind of paraphrased, the devil does not. Amen? The devil does not. He does not want your husband saved. He does not want your child saved. He does not want this one saved. He does not. And he's doing right now, and he's doing all that he can to blind them. Blind them through money. Blind them through power, through position, through fame, through the world. What the world can offer them. What this job can offer them. What this person can offer them. And he'll offer them everything that they can to blind them and to keep them from Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the reality, my friends. See, my friends, that's what we're battling. That's what we're battling today when we are here to reach the lost. You know, we're not alone. See, our battle is not against those who are lost. We're battling the one who is trying to take the hell out of them. That's right. That's right. And his power we underestimate. But there is a power that is greater than the power of the devil. The same power that conquered Satan. See, Satan thought he won when he crucified Jesus on the cross. He celebrated and laughed. Woo hoo hoo, look at him now, he's dead. He didn't realize that three days later he would rise again. And he didn't realize that blood that was spilled would be the blood that would wash you and I from all of our sins. <laughs> boy, boy, you talk about a turnaround. He must have felt like a dope that day. Amen? And he still is a dope. But you know what? 
still so many people that are following him, following after him. I'm not saying that they claim to be devil worshippers. Most of them would never say that they are a devil worshipper. But yet blindly they follow his influence. And so, my friends, where are we at with Acts 2 journey? Where are we at yesterday as we came to to walk in our community? Where are we at? Where are we at? Prayer. And prayer becomes a very, very powerful weapon for us. Not our only weapon, but just the one I'm mentioning this morning. It's prayer. And I want to call you, call this church to prayer. The next time that we have a prayer walk, always great scene 22, but I think we could have had easily a whole lot more than that. And I believe that as we begin to unite under some of these things that we've been talking about, that God, we're going to see some change. If we want to see our families and friends come to Christ, we need to pray. I want you to turn to one more verse and we're going to close. We're going to close. Amen. Matthew chapter 16. This is a great verse. Jesus is talking about his church. He has prophetically declared that he is going to build his church. And he said, he said, guys, it's going to be great. You're never going to have any problems. <laughs> you know, you're just going to go into communities and just preach the gospel and everybody's going to get saved. And it's, it's just going to be, it's just going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. And people are just going to be walking. You build a church here. We want a church here. Hallelujah. There are going to be people lining up outside up, the door, down the street, saying, we can't wait to get in to hear the good news and get saved. And Jesus said, Wow, guys, you're going to love it. Is that what he said? That's not what he said, did he? Is that what he said? This is what he said. And I will build my church. Very nice. Didn't even get fully that whole breath out. He says, in the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, Jesus did not say that the gates of hell will not come against the church. But he said they will not what? Prevail. Prevail. But the devil will do all because we know what the word of God tells us. Amen. And we see as we read that the enemy who is the enemy of our souls, who hates God, who hates anything to do with the church, hates anything to do with the blood. Matter of fact, let me tell you right now, the devil hates what I just said as we were talking about the blood. The enemy is just, ah, he's going nuts because he knows that's the secret is when you can admit that you're a sinner and you need to be washed in the blood. The devil fears that more than anything else. And so he'll let churches become prosperous. Did you hear the whole thing about Crepo Dollar this morning? Oh, what a shame it is. A reproach to the body of Christ. That somebody would need a $65 million jet that Bill Gates and some of these other people, you know, there's a three-year waiting list with the elite of the elites of corporate money, whatever, waiting for this new family jet. And then you kind of wonder why his congregation is a little upset. Amen. Uh, our next board meeting, I'm proposing for a, a $65 million jet. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I'll just take, I'll just take, you know, $65, you know, thousand dollar. Mercedes instead. I don't think I get that either, okay? But, hallelujah. But, you know, let me tell you the word, oh, hallelujah. The enemy is coming against, he comes against the church. But, you know, we're going to keep reading. Because Jesus went on to say this here. This is what he says. He says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth, see he's talking about prayer now, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What we did yesterday as we were 
going around our community praying for we were binding the work of the enemy. Yeah, right. Satan, we bind you. We know what you're doing. We know that we know what you're trying to do. We are not ignorant of your schemes. We're not ignorant of what you are desiring to do to every single man, woman, and child in this community. But we bind you in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we are loosening now, right now, the Spirit of God yes. in our community. That the Holy Spirit would begin to uh, to draw people, to convict people, to open eyes. That eyes would be open to the truth. That all of a sudden, that ears that had been clogged for years will suddenly begin to open. And there's some of you here this morning that your ears have been closed for years. And God is now opening your ears to hear the truth that you've not heard. You've, it's been spoken, but you've not heard it because the enemy has clouded your hearing and he's filled it with so many other things that you can't hear. Amen? That's what God is, that's what God is up to. And that's what God is going to begin to do as we begin to, as we begin to pray. So, I want, you to do, I want you to do something for me. I want you, Easter's coming up in three weeks, three weeks Sunday in Easter. I want you to write down the name of three people. Come on, do it right now. <coughs> There's pens in their pews. Write down the name of three people. And begin to do that, what we just talked. Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. And one of the things that we can do is that we can begin to pray. And you can begin just to pray, God, I just, just bind just the work of the enemy that has blinded my friend or my sister or whatever, whoever that, who has blinded them so that they, Lord, they just don't even want to hear anymore. But God, I'm asking you, Lord, that you will open their eyes, open their ears. And that the Holy Spirit, I just ask, Holy Spirit, would you be just begin to just move in their lives and just open their eyes, open their hearts so that they can see the truth that God loves them. God truly loves them and he has a plan for their life and he wants them to be saved. Can you do that? Can you just pray for just pray for two or three people the next few weeks and just pray for them. Just begin to pray for them every day. I believe that's the place to start. And that's where we are as a church. We're in that praying start. Now there's going to be a time where we're going to start taking it beyond just the praying. Because we need to do that. Amen. But we began in prayer. I want you to bow your heads with me. Maybe there's maybe there's someone here this morning, or someone or someone this morning who have never what what you have heard this morning was maybe something you've not heard before. You know, you've heard about maybe coming to church and giving money or things like that, but you've not heard about maybe getting right with God, being saved, admitting that I'm a sinner, that <coughs> my sin, that's going to keep me from heaven. Yeah. And that Jesus died on the cross and his blood can wash me of all my sin. Become a child of God through his blood. And if you have not if you struggle with that whole thing about admitting that you need that you're a sinner and that you need to repent of your sins then you know, maybe you're not ready you know, maybe that's possible you know, well, I'm not ready to change I don't want to change I want to keep sinning I want to keep just doing things the way I want to I want to live my life the way I want to I don't want nobody even God to tell me what to do but my friend, you, you may pay the consequences of that. And that's not what God has for you. Because God truly loves you. But you need to come to that place where you can admit, yeah, I am a sinner. And I need to I need to repent of my sin. I need to be washed in the blood of Jesus. To be a son of God, a daughter of God. And if you feel the Holy Spirit's tug in your heart, that you can admit honestly with your whole heart this morning that you're a sinner, and that you need to be saved, you need to be washed, then I want you to pray this prayer with me. 
It's the most important prayer that can ever be prayed in anyone's life. And I'm just going to encourage you this morning just to step out in faith. But truly, I want you to be serious about this year. God moves your heart. Number one, that we admit, I'm a, I'm, I'm a sinner. I've sinned. And I fall short of the glory of God. And I fall short. I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Come on, each, each and every one of us. And, that, and there's one or two here, maybe this morning, you need to pray this prayer for the first time. Come on, pray this prayer with your dear Lord. Dear Lord. I am a sinner. It is my sin that will keep me from heaven. You sent your son to die on a cross to wash my sin. I believe that he is God, the son of the living God. And his death on the cross is for me. I confess that I am a sinner and I ask you, Lord, to come into my life. Wash me clean in your blood. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God, yes, my Lord, God, you heard our prayers this morning. And maybe there was one here this morning who prayed that prayer. Hallelujah. For the first time. Many of us, we just prayed it again because... Because we just, we're never going to neglect this salvation. We're never going to take it for granted that it came at the great cost of the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you prayed that prayer this morning, I want you to come up to me right after, immediately right after, after I close the prayer. I want you to come. I want you to come up and just... And just, just tell me, you know, I prayed that prayer this morning. I just want to pray with you and maybe just speak with you just for a few moments, okay? Will you do that, please? Now, Father God, we just thank you, God, for your love. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. Hallelujah. For this great salvation that you have given to us. Hallelujah. That makes us so full and so free. And God, we just praise you for it. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that has been in this house. God, this has been your hour, God, to move in our lives and to do what you want to do, what you need to do. Thank you for encouraging. Thank you, God, for strengthening. Lord, thank you for saving. Hallelujah. God, we're so good to be, to be here today. And we just bless you and we give you thanks. Now, Lord, as we leave and as we go to our separate ways, Lord, we, God, we just want to go knowing that you are always with us. Amen. That he goes where I go. Where I go, he goes. Amen. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you for that. In Jesus' name. And all God's people. Come on. What do we say together? Amen. 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 If you pray